So our last speaker is Mursad Hadzikadik. Hopefully I said that well, been practicing. Uh, he has a lot in common with Frankie in that he spent his time going back and forth from uh, university and academia. And both of them also really love North Carolina. It's great to talk to both of them because they talk about the warm sun, the diversity of the geography, the climate. Again, keeps coming back to how great it is around here, the nature, the warm people. He hasn't lived in New Jersey, I don't think. But um, he also says he loves being surrounded by people that share his love for learning. And so we're, we're glad to have him here. Wherever he grows, he says he's very driven by creation, creating things. Whether it's creating a new system, creating a new architecture, creating a new application, uh, but most importantly, creating an environment where his students and people can share their ideas freely and, and be successful. So, Mursad, why don't you come up and tell us about your program? Thank you, Ginger. Okay, so they clearly saved the worst for last. This program, this project, North Carolina Data Science and Analytics Initiative is a collaboration among three institutions. Uh, there's UNC Charlotte, NC State, and RENC at Chapel Hill. If you have any questions, there are many of uh, my colleagues here in the audience. During the reception, if you have a question, ask them. I'm just a figurehead. So, 9-11, Paris, Brussels, they are all in part due to our inability or lack of willingness to share data and information. And we see that every day. Not only at the international or national level, but we see it locally or everywhere. This is the logo of Bank of America. I come from Charlotte. We are friends, we love each other. For two years, we tried to get data from them to help them fix the problem that they have, and we have the people we, we know how to fix the problem. For two years, they lawyers and one hour, one lawyer, we talked about it. They cleansed the data. We decided not to actually look at customer's data, consumer's data, but we actually looked at commercial data, not to offend too many people. Five million records cleansed, cleaned of any identifying information. When we were ready to receive information, somebody at Bank of America found one record where in the comment field, somebody inappropriately put a name of the company. The lawyer said no. They didn't get their problem solved. Our students didn't get a chance to participate and work on that. Nobody gained anything. We are facing the risk all the time. We think we are safe. We don't even know where we are going. We could know by sharing data, but we don't. We are looking ahead. We don't understand the crosswinds that can get us off at any point. It is the digital world out there. Now, in the, day, in the age of big data, where we collect more data than ever, where it, it's, we are blinded by the speed and the volume that's arriving at us, we are trying to figure out what each and every bit of information actually means, but at the same time, we don't even know what it is that we don't collect. A few days ago, I was at the family party looking at two kids, one three-year-old, one five-year-old, on a sofa, using, using their iPads to establish a network, to fire up a game, start playing against each other, their fingers flying across iPad. I felt so inadequate. Guy got worried. It is a digital world. This is what big data is, uh, is all about. The digital world is getting even more dangerous simply because there are four Vs and they are depicted from the northeast corner in green counterclockwise. It says variety. It simply means that the data is coming to, uh, at us in different forms, structured, unstructured, emails, Facebook, Twitter, cash registers, whatever. We are collecting information from more variety sources than ever. 
and new sources are being invested and invented every day, and we just saw examples of some of them in the previous presentation. When you look at the next one, it says volume. It simply means there's more of it. There are more cell phones. There are, there's more plastic with displays that we will touch and push, and it's going to create all of these new data sources. But there's also one that says velocity. It means it's getting faster simply because there are more users, and we are actually pushing those buttons faster and faster as we go. It's going to be even more dangerous. And the last one, it says veracity. It simply means that it's getting less accurate simply because there is more of it and everybody is pushing those buttons. And the number here, it says $3.1 trillion a year that we are losing because of incorrect information. You know what happened the other day? I have two grandsons. One is two and whatever, two years to a couple of months and the other one is eight months. The two-year-old loves cars. He has these iPods. If you want to keep, keep him quiet, that's the only way. Keep him an iPod, give him an iPod. He's going to look at cars, auto cartoons, whatever. He says, auto. And he looks at it, and then every time he's, he gets uh, boring bored, he pushes the button and scrolls the screen to get to the next video. The seven-month-old is looking at it all the time, and he got this message. When he does this, he touches a toy, nothing happens. But when you touch the screen, things happen, <laughs> things move, a new thing pops up. So here's what he does all the time. Gets the screen and does this. Can you imagine Apple collecting the data, trying to make sense? Why is somebody doing this at that speed and that frequency, going from one movie to another? This is what he does. That's part of 3.1 trillion dollars. What this project does is actually collecting, con combining, connecting companies that create that big thing in the middle that says big data, collecting all of that for themselves, thinking they know everything. Part of it is inaccurate. Part of it actually makes sense. And there is so much more that's not there, just like our agencies trying to understand who is a terrorist and who is not and where's the opportunity to sell something and where it is not. What we are doing, we are providing the glue, the platform, that will allow these companies, the federal agencies, the governments, institutions, universities, to actually see what others have, data sets and tools, and start sharing in a safe, regulated, governed environment. So you basically can say, if we share this agreement, if you sign the agreement, what we can do is duplicate, uh, reduce duplication, eliminate waste by saying, listen, we have this data, you have that data. If you want to run analysis, pick select from the files at NC State and Chapel Hill and UNC Charlotte, run analysis on any of those tools, get the result back to your screen tremendous value added to any institution in this state. The same tunnel, when you looked at it, what we are providing, several, se uh, se uh, several governance procedures that allow us, the users, even us, the designers, the nerds, to look at every single data bit and understand what conforms to the expected practice, what doesn't. We organized uh, Analytics Frontiers Conference at UNC Charlotte, in Charlotte, several weeks ago. 420 people. The last panel, there is Lori Reedhead, big, uh, big uh, higher up executive at Bank of America. The question was, do we trust, can we trust data? You know, all this data comes in different forms and shapes, and you know, there are these seven months old who are playing with screens, do we know what it actually means? Lori said the following, we are not gonna actually spend 80% of every data collection on cleaning data sets. What we will do is sign contrast, contract with trusted sources. So there will be three, four, five trusted providers that they will trust and say, okay, we will look at your data but not anybody else's. We already have that in place. We don't need Bank of America to tell us what to do. Risk is everywhere. So what we decided was to actually 
try to use this platform that we developed and established to demonstrate how it can be used uh, for beneficial projects. We decided to focus on risk simply because risk is everywhere. Anything and everything we do is and can be measured in risk. So what we do is basically fund three projects. This time we funded three projects, all of them dealing with risk. One of them is about Zika virus. And that's the only one I wanna tell you about. What this project does is actually controls, measures, receives information about genetic variation, mutation, um, set of informations about Zika cases as they move through the world. What it allows us to do is to anticipate, predict, inform agencies, states, about the movement and the danger for the population, for the economy, for the state. This can be then implied for anything else that has to do with observing information as it moves in time and space. So what this project actually does is, some, is creating the platform, the glue, that enables anything else to be, on, to be built on top of it. It provides a tremendous set of resources for the state where universities, industry, government, can actually share information, prevent surprises, and allow us, allow us to be more economically viable and efficient in the future. All of that because of the investment made into this project, and for that, we are grateful. Thank you.